This Bass Pro Shops Night Race DFS Picks and Underdog Plays edition of the NASCAR Gambling Podcast here on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the app now and use code SGP. New customers can score $200 in bonus bets instantly when they bet just $5 on football. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code SGP. We're also brought to you by Game Time. Snag the tickets without the stress. Use promo code SGPN on your first purchase to save $20. Download the Game Time app and use promo code SGPN. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play the Underdog Pick 'em in college or NFL and win up to 20 times in one game. Use promo code SGPN at Underdog Fantasy for a 100% deposit bonus up to $100. Finally, we're brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting research platform that for parlays, player props, and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com. Use code SGPN to get 50% off of your first month and start making smarter bets today. Driver, start your in and pull those belts up tight as the Sports Gambling Podcast Network presents the NASCAR Gambling Podcast. I'll wreck my mom to win a championship. I'll wreck your mom to win a championship. With all the news and the best bets for your NASCAR weekend. It refrains me from not beating the out of you right now because you ask me stupid questions but since i'm on probation i suppose that that's uh, in- improper to say as well if you could talk about racing things we could talk about racing things. now here are your hosts rod via gomez and cody zeeb Back for another day of talking racing things. It is the NASCAR Gambling Podcast here on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. He's Cody Z, Rod Via Gomez. We're flying it solo today, just the two of us. I know how much of a smash hit that truck episode was. They, I mean, we will have that again. I was a blast, Cody. I, I, I think that was probably one of the most uh, enjoyable times I've had on a podcast. Uh, of course, next to our first one together. But yeah, definitely a good time. I don't know that I had a good time on our first podcast together, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel a lot more comfortable now than I did back then, which is nice. But no, that was such a fun podcast. Thanks again to to Derek and Phil jumping on, joining us, doing the crossover episode. Uh, yeah, we're, we're definitely going to have to visit that again. Not many people talk trucks uh, when it comes to betting and, and they, they do it. We do it. It's a perfect match. Obviously, we all get along really well and we had a good time. It was a lot of fun. Excited to see, uh, well, I guess the truck race happened last night. Hopefully we won. <laughs> Spoiler alert, we're recording this before the truck race, but that's okay. Uh, I'm excited to see how that pans out or panned out at this point in time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, we we filmed the DFS film tape. I, I'm using ancient, like, go ahead, Discord, come at me. Uh, I'm, I'm 90 years old. I know, right? Literally. So we film the, uh, these episodes obviously on Thursdays because that's when the schedule allow. But, uh, yeah, obviously this, this week <laughs> the truck race happens tonight, uh, which is Thursday tomorrow. If you're listening or yesterday, if you're listening on Friday, but yeah, time <laughs> yeah. warp yeah. Us, we? It allows us to get these Friday shows out to you a little bit earlier, give you a little time to, to sit and marinate on the, the DFS there. And yeah, schedules, scheduling can be crazy on Fridays for both of us. So we found out what works. It works. If we didn't say anything, you probably wouldn't even know the difference. Not even a little. We're pulling back the curtain for you. But um, yeah, of course, this is like Cody said, the DFS episode and underdog episode. So we will not only give you our three DFS drivers that we like the best, but we'll also give you three underdog plays that we like as well for higher or lower. Um, it is of course, Bristol, it's Bristol, baby. It's the night race. It's Saturday night. Uh, obviously by this point, if you're listening to this on Saturday, both the trucks and Xfinity have run, uh, just a very unique situation in NASCAR. So you can use Sunday to enjoy football all day long. <laughs> there you go. That's right. <laughs> but, uh, you F1. F1. Wake up with F1. Then yes. you get to the football. Make sure you wake up with F1. Make sure you listen to the F1 gambling podcast as well. It's yeah. been out for a couple of days. So. Um, appreciate those of you guys who have been downloading it from this feed too. Hopefully it's been something that uh, you found some value in 
Hopefully it's something you've cashed in. So I mean, forty to one, thirty to one. Hopefully they found some value somewhere, Rod. <laughs> I I would hope so for sure. Um, one hundred and twenty-five yeah. to one this week. So uh, let's see if we can hit that. I know Cody. Cody was rolling it out like Maddie was like, "I'm a I'm gonna get yeah. this hundred twenty-five to go, one. We're gonna go big or go home." Hashtag <laughs> DGens only. Hashtag DGens only. That is it too. Uh, short track, obviously, a lot of laps to lead in this one. So you gotta find the pot, the guy that's gonna lead you a lot of laps. I think These we're, laps we're click off fast too, fast. so Very fast. Fast. Um, and what is it? There's uh th- 500 of them, so yeah, lots that's of a laps. Lot. That's a lot. That's a lot of laps led. That's a lot of fastest laps. Fastest laps can bounce around a little bit with it being such a short track, depending on how traffic is, depending on tire situations. So, but obviously your your leaders are probably still going to get a majority of those. But laps led. If you don't hit the guys who lead laps this week, you're completely screwed. Uh, you, you have got to because 500 laps, uh, this actually is probably the most laps that we actually run in any race, I think throughout the season. I mean, obviously you've got the 600 miler at, at, you know, and, uh, for the Coke 600, but that's, that's on a mile and a half track. So it's not 500 laps. Um, and so, yeah, thinking a quick thought about it, right. I think we do 400 maybe at one of the Martinsville races. Um, but yeah, I think 500 is the most laps led. So. That is the biggest key this week. Obviously, finishing positions and then place differential matter like they always do. But if somebody comes out and, and leads 200 laps or leads 300 laps or 400 laps, you know, and, and really, if, if you can get the two or three guys who lead all these laps, uh, it's going to be huge. Track position is going to be key in this race. Once you get up front, it's it's passing is not going to come super easy. There's going to be a lot of strategy and stuff played. So I think we're going to get some shakeups. Pit crews, we've seen how big of a part they've played, especially lately. Speaking of which, one of the pieces of news, Kyle Busch, Austin Dillon swapping their pit crews this week. Um, we've seen how that's not worked out for the 20 car, so we'll see. Um, but, you know, maybe that works out for Kyle Busch. Obviously, one car is in the playoffs, one car is not. So you take what you think is the better better pit crew and you, you put them on the, the guy in the playoffs. It makes sense. So uh, maybe the 20 team will start to get it figured out. But, uh, yeah, it'll be, be an interesting week here. And, and again, you've got to nail the guys who lead laps. So, uh, you know, the guys who start up front, it's going to be important to, to pay attention who starts on the pole, who starts on the front row, pick which guy you think is going to jump out to that early lead and lead a ton of laps early. Um, so yeah, definitely have to be paying attention this week. Well, and I'll tell you one thing too, uh, Kyle Bush, he's had his fair share of pit problems. So I'm sure he's welcoming this new crew into the mix, uh, for sure. But to your point about laps led, I will tell you this. So Kyle Larson in 2021, led 175 laps. Chase Elliott led 129 laps. The next best was Kevin Harvick at 71. To your point about starting up front, Kyle Larson started fifth and led that, uh, uh, that 179, 175 laps rather, rather uh, on his way to the win. Now Chase Elliott, on the other hand, started to 25th and ended up leading all those laps. But um, that's, that's kind of an outlier. But Kevin Harvick started second. He led uh started eighth rather and he led all those laps too. Denny Hamlin started second, led 65. You're noticing a pattern here. Start up front. Yeah. It's not always. Left. I mean, it obviously starting up front gives you a, a massive advantage, but like the Chase Elliott example, you don't have to, right? It is 500 laps. So if it takes them 200 laps to get up front, but they do get up front and then they flip a you know a strategy or or whatever the case may be, guys from farther back can lead a ton as well. So yeah, yeah well, you're gonna to case in point, uh but, Chris Busher last year started yep. 20th he led 169 laps the most laps in that race 143 laps for christopher bell <laughs> 109 for brad kozlowski again we're, we're setting the pattern here that there's going to be a lot of laps led by a handful of individuals so we've got to identify who those are going to be <laughs> that little giggle there reminded me i don't know if you have you seen the video from the iowa quarterback uh-huh. uh this week oh you've got to after if, if you're listening to this pause this show google it just k mcnamara is his name uh he's just he's talking he's like in a room talking to some reporters and he just i, I don't it's it's hilarious i don't i don't want to you know ruin it but something put it he in says discord. put it yeah, in the discord yeah I, I will for sure he says something about you know they're going to be coming at they're going to be coming hard really getting after it or and we got to watch our protection and then he just like busts out laughing because he he realizes like oh what, what the fuck did i just say i thought it was hilarious so anyways <laughs> completely sidetracked but that giggle made me think of that, and it's uh, absolutely hilarious. So Iowa football is not good for much, but at least we got that clip out of them. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, I'll take that, Nick Fortune. <laughs> we want to hear that for sure. But uh, all right, well, we will start giving you our DFS plays for this. I think we've already set up this race well enough. You guys know Bristol; it's probably not your first time uh, on a short track, so we don't have to set it all up for you as well. Uh, but we'll get to our favorite plays. Let's tell you about DraftKings. Football's back in full swing with another week of epic games. And who's got you covered on the action for every single one of them? That's right. DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. New customers bet $5 on football. You get $200 instantly in bonus bets. Plus, nobody's missing out. So if you're already a member, don't worry. They got you in on the action all season long. All DraftKings customers can take advantage of, of two new offers every game day this September. Get in on the NFL Week 2 action with DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the app now and use code SGP to sign up. New customers can bet just $5 and take home 200 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings with the Sportsbook with code SGP. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details and state-specific responsible gambling resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Don't like buying tickets. I cannot stand buying tickets because I always have to figure out whether or not I can make the event. And sometimes that doesn't happen until a couple of days before the event. And then I am at the mercy of these apps who love, love to jack up the prices just before the event because of people like me who sit around and wait to buy the tickets. Well, you can stop doing that and buy all the tickets you want for all of your sp- your favorite sporting events, music, concerts comedy whatever theaters got going on near you you are going to get rewarded for your procrastination with great last minute ticket deals with game time and the best the best price is guaranteed stop stressing over the tickets that you're going to buy and start getting hyped for all the fun you are going to have right now get in on it download the game time app snag the tickets without the stress with game time download that app create an account use code sgpn twenty dollars you're going to get off of your first purchase terms apply again Create an account, redeem code SGPN for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. All right. Well, maybe we'll do a live show, Cody, and sell tickets, and then we'll have the Game Time app supply some great deals for that. There you go. Sounds sounds great. I'm I'm here for the sponsors, whatever they want. Yeah, I, I would definitely love nothing more than to offer everybody a live NASCAR game. Oh my God, I'll bet everybody would eat that up. <laughs> Hey, that's you know maybe someday maybe maybe that uh, maybe that'll be on the list in a, in a year or two. Twenty twenty four. Put that there on our go. on our uh, on our vision <laughs> board for that. So, um, all right. Well, Cody, I guess the only thing now is to get down to business. Who are our favorite DFS high price drivers for the slate? Yeah, let's jump into it. Uh, I'm actually going to go just to the very top of the board here and and take the the low hanging fruit. I guess it is. But Kyle Larson, he's eleven thousand five hundred. Um, we didn't talk about him much on the betting episode. Not because we don't think he's going to be good here. And and so I think that is something that sometimes I want to make sure we're clear on, I guess. Like he's, I'm going to make the point for why he's a really good DFS play. As far as betting goes, like his numbers weren't great. His matchups are super tough. If there is any, because he's one of the, you know, he's the, he is the favorite. His outright price, while it's, it was okay. It's like, He's not always as super reliable to win the race at the end, even when he does good. And so uh, while we didn't necessarily like anything as far as betting on him, when it comes to DFS, Kyle Larson has been good lately. Kyle Larson has been good at Bristol in the past. The last two weeks, Rod, last week at Kansas, 85.3 DFS points on DraftKings. He started second. He finished fourth. He led 99 laps, had 50 fastest laps. The week before at Darlington, 89.3 89.3 points. He started 18th, finished first, 30 fastest laps, led 55 laps. Um, and then you go back and you look at what he's done at Bristol. He's been really good here. Last year, he started fifth, finished fifth. He led 34 laps. This price, that's probably not going to pay off for you. But the year before, he started fifth. He's got a thing for starting fifth, apparently. But started fifth, finished in first. Uh, like you said before, led 175 laps on the day that day. Um, before that, uh, he did not race here in 2020. I believe he was suspended when they came to this, the track, uh, at that point, but 2019, he finished sixth here in Chip Ganassi car, 2018, two second place finishes in Chip Ganassi car. Um, and he's got a bunch of other ones in a Chip Ganassi car, 2018, he led 200 laps here. 
Uh, Chip Ganassi car in 2017, he led 202 laps here. Chip Ganassi car 2015, he led 90 laps here. Like the Chip Ganassi car was always okay, but it was Kyle Larson made it way more than it ever should have ever was really right. And so, uh, but he, he's got certain tracks he's really good at. This is one of those tracks. This is a track that lends towards the dirt drivers uh, really well, right? Christopher Bell does extremely well here. I consider talking about him as well. Another guy we didn't really touch on in the betting episode, but should be very good at this track. Um, Chase Briscoe, guy we did talk about on the, the betting episode, right? And he's he's been very good here as well. So uh, lends into their hands. And again, 500 laps out there. Kyle Larson is the type of driver in the type of car who could lead 500 laps like he could just lead the whole thing it's probably not going to happen that way but he could lead a good portion of this race right and so uh, i think that he's going to be very very popular he'll probably be one of the most popular plays on the board no matter where he starts because if he starts up front you're going to want him if he starts farther back you're going to want him right but uh so he will be popular but uh, i i think that the upside is definitely there with him uh the the one part that scares you a little bit right so you don't want to completely rely on him because the finishes aren't always there you go back and you look through some of his finishes. Those two weeks were great, right? But the two weeks before that, minus 3.7, a point four. He had a 34 in there, a 53, but then a 24, 15, 61, but then minus 20 points. So it has been up and down throughout the past, right? But he's been very good the last two weeks with a very fast car. We've seen him up front of both races. Um, and he's got nothing to worry about. There's no pressure this week. He's locked into the next round. And that is the best thing you can have if you're counting on a driver because the team isn't scrambling. They're not trying to, to do something extra. The picker's not under a bunch of pressure. Just go out there and run his race. And if you finish well, great. You finish bad, whatever. And then when you get that relaxed, they're taking that deep breath. They don't have all the pressure on them. That's when sometimes these guys really step up and perform big. So I think Kyle Larson could have a huge day. Um, and he's definitely a guy you're going to have to play in some of your DFS lineups. 11,500. You got to pay for it for sure if the price is there. But his upside is extremely high. Yeah, and obviously the books agree with you too, and the, and the DFS pricers agree with you as well. I mean, he's definitely one of the highest priced guys and the most shortest odds uh, in the books. So yeah, I mean, again, it's not. We love to get fancy. We love to try to to get cute all the time. But sometimes you just have to eat the chalk. It's just it is what it is in these tournaments, especially if you're going to try to win money. Now, if you're going to be contrarian the whole time you're probably on a losing strategy more than you're on a winning strategy. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you gotta, you gotta go with the guys that are going to get points. And obviously Kyle Larson, one of those guys, uh, I will turn my attention to one of the lower priced guys in this. That's actually still in the upper tier. And that's Kevin Harvick in that number four car, $9,500. Here's the thing about Kevin Harvick though. We have preached Kevin Harvick as sort of a, uh, a fantasy, uh, just a, a fantasy staple every every week. And this season hasn't necessarily panned out the way he wanted to, but he's still averaging 35 points per race, which actually is not necessarily uh, that bad of a points per race when you consider at the top, you got Martin Truex, you got uh, Martin Truex at 45, William Byron at 42. So Kevin Harvick slots in somewhere inside that top 10. Um, not bad for a guy that we've pretty much... Uh, written off for the rest of the season as far as having a at least a win or something but Kevin Harvick around this track has been spectacular his entire career and I say that because he's only uh behind Kyle Busch as far as laps led in his career around this Kyle Busch has 25 or 2,593 laps led uh Kevin Harvick has 1,209 laps led on this track so uh just a fantastic career on this track on Bristol in general, the most top tens, uh, the tied for the most top fives. He's got 22 top tens, 14 top fives, three wins on this track. And not all of that has been necessarily in the past. You look back at, like I said, uh, the 2022 race where Kevin Harvick, um, actually he finished seventh in that race, uh, or finished 10th in that race rather, but, uh, started seventh, right? So, not a not a great day overall, but still a, a pretty decent day for for Kevin Harvick. But you look back at the couple of races before that, he led 71 laps in 2021. He led 26 laps and won the 2020 race, the final 2020 race of the uh, of the year. He finished second too in 2021 as well. So a good solid finish for him in that race. 
but for Kevin Harvick, you look at what he's done on, on short tracks this season. Martinsville was pretty tough. He started seventh, finished 20th, but he did lead 20 laps along the way. So those were some lap leads for you as well. Richmond, a nice solid fifth place finish after a 10th place start. So that's a good DFS day for you. You'll take that. Uh, Richmond, the second time around, eighth place start, but he finished 10th in that one. So not a bad day for him there as well. Um, you know, again, it, it's just that Kevin Harvick finds a way to finish well at this track. And he's done it year after year after year. And for $9,500, a lot of people, like Cody said, are going to be flocking toward the Kyle Larson's. Uh, a lot of them are probably going to be going up toward the top of that list for the Denny Hamlin's. Maybe even the Christopher Bells if he uh, if he does another solid uh, day of, of qualifying. But for me, I'm going to go ahead and, and crawl into the 9,500 range and and cozy up to Kevin Harvick because I think he's going to be a sneaky play, especially in tournaments this this uh, this slate. Yeah, Harvick is a great play. We talked about him on the betting episode how good he has been here in the past. This is one of his his better chances of the remaining races. He could win any of the tracks because. We know he's good at all, maybe not the Roval, but he could probably win the rest of them. Although with the added whatever they're doing at the Roval, maybe it'll be chaotic enough. Did you see, sorry to get off track again, but did you see Michael McDowell's tweet about Joey Logano? I did. I did. You want to type <laughs> that it in That was there? just absolutely great. Logano said something about, on Sirius or whatever, about how he liked the changes because they're, they're doing the restart zone in the chicane and they're doing the stage breaks. But NAS, NASCAR basically trying to make that race as chaotic as possible, which will be great for TV and people will like it, right? But, and McDowell basically retweeted that and said, yeah, because he doesn't know how to drive and be good at those tracks. Of course he likes it. So I I throw it in there and try to wreck everybody. I know that's, but back to my Kevin Harvick point. Yes, he could, he could probably win any, any of the races remaining, but this is one of his better chances. And at 9,500, he's capable of getting up there and leading a ton of laps. We've seen him. He's led laps the last couple of weeks. He's had fast cars. It's not lasted necessarily um, to, to where he stayed up front, but uh, he, he's had the opportunities we talked about, or at least I talked about how good Stuart Haas is on the short tracks, right? And how good they should be here. Bristol or Harvick is good here. Uh, I think this is a, a really good play at 9,500. All right, so we will move on to our mid-price drivers, but let's tell you first about Hall of Fame bets. Win bigger by betting smarter this NFL season with Hall of Fame bets, the sports betting analytics platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Research every NFL, NBA, MLB, and soccer bet with historical stats and data. Enter a parlay, any parlay idea, into Hall of Fame bets, revolutionary parlay optimizer tool to get hit rates broken down by leg as well as expected probability for the entire parlay sort all players by hit rate for any bet to learn which players are hot and which players and which picks have value stop betting in the dark and join over 30,000 users researching with hall of fame bets to craft more intelligent data-driven parlays download the hall of fame bets app or visit hofbets.com and use code sgpn to get 50 percent off of your first month today start researching start winning with hall of fame bets underdog fantasy has a way to play alongside your favorite football team or drive along with your favorite racer all season long you can win up to 20 times your money in a single game or race by going five for five. It's a fantasy game, but you can win real money. This week's special promotion, they're giving away $100,000. All you have to do to do this is make a pick em selection that includes Tua's passing yards, 277 and a half higher or lower. Listen, this prop doesn't even have to hit for you to get this. So you can just pick it. That's all you need to do is involve it in your parlay. Underdog's going to select 10 random winners to give out $10,000 each to. You're not doing this. You're throwing away your chance at 10K. So watch along, make your picks, and maybe make a little cash over on Underdog's mobile app or website, underdogfantasy.com. When you sign up with promo code SGPN, Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's Underdog Fantasy promo code SGPN. Which, by the way, what do you think, higher or lower? For two. Uh, he's playing against my Patriots on Sunday night football. Uh, it's going to be over. It, t- the Patriots cannot stop tight. Not that anybody can, but Tyreek Hill is is very good. And they're not going to slow him down. <laughs> 277 uh, does seem like a very yeah. conservative number for that. It, I mean, yeah, the, the Patriots defense is, is good and they'll show up and they'll, they'll look good at points, but 
Tyreek is going to beat him deep at, at points, and, and he's going to get the big plays. So uh, I think they probably will. And the Patriots uh, are our friends over at Old Fashioned Football there. Mac Jones won Sir Throws a lot this past week because he was the, the quarterback that threw the most passes on the week, which is not a good thing. <laughs> that would not be happening, but, you know, we'll see. Who knows? But I would, if I was taking it, uh, which, you know, I, I, I'm i a sucker for these these contests, so I'll have one, and uh, I'll probably be taking the over. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, all right. Well, then, speaking of the uh, higher then, let's go to the lower-priced drivers here. Not the low-low, but the, the lower-priced than the high-priced. Uh, who do you got for our mid-tier drivers? Yeah, so mid tier, I'm gonna kind of go towards the top of the tier two, and this this guy's gonna be kind of a surprise, and, and it's not necessarily based on uh, track history or anything like that. It's just kind of this is a guy I feel like could have a really good week. Gonna kind of throw a dart out there. I, I don't think his roster ship is gonna be very much because you don't really associate him with this track much. It's Tyler Reddick, 8300. Uh, you look at what Tyler Reddick has done lately, and it's been really good, right? He had a great race last week at Kansas put himself in the right position. Overtime happens. He ends up taking the win, cashing our 9-1 to bet for us. Thank you very much. The week before at Darlington, 77.7 points. He started third. He finished second. He led 90 laps that day, uh, 27 fastest laps. He's in a Jordan car again this weekend. It seems like that Jordan car always performs better than the other sponsors for whatever reason. Um, you go back through a couple of these other races, right, and he's, he's had some really good weeks, uh, some – some places like Michigan, it kind of ends up being a little deceiving. He only scored 5.1, but he was one of the fastest cars that day. He was going to have a chance to win that before the loose tire at the end, right? So you can't always trust them, but knock on wood here, these last couple of weeks have been a little stronger for them. This team's clicking on all cylinders. Similar to the Kyle Larson argument, Tyler Reddick has nothing to worry about this weekend. He's already locked in. Everything is good, right? It's, it's golden. They can just go out and run their own race. Um, and Tyler Reddick, probably the second most talented driver in the field right now to Kyle Larson. It's, I mean, as far as raw talent goes, Tyler Reddick is very high on the list. Uh, and as far as young drivers go, probably the top guy on that. Uh, and we're starting to see it a little more. And the way he stayed so calm through all of this, you know, they had the the loose tires and they've had some mistakes and it's, oh, you know, we're just going to keep mining our P's and Q's and then, you know, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to take care of it. And this, you know, we just got to be better as a team. It's going to be fun. Like, no, it does not cursing at people like just brushes it off. Now they're locked in. Go out. He can run his race. I think Tyler Reddick could be a surprise guy here. So, again, this is kind of more of a GPP play, right? He's going to be pretty low rostered, I think, in my opinion, um, and maybe give you a chance to uh, throw a dart out there at a guy that we know is capable any week of having one of the fastest cars in the field, of performing well. Maybe he's the, the sneaky guy who leads 250 laps in this race. And, you're one of the few people who has them in your DFS lineup could make a big difference for you. So uh, give me Tyler Reddick. I was looking back to it as uh, previous track stats here. 25th last year wasn't great, um, but 12th the year before he did have a fourth place finish here, you know, in, in, in the RCR eight car uh, back in 2020, 10th in one of his other starts. So no, hasn't led any laps here yet. Um, so, you know, again, if, if people are looking at that, they're probably not going to play him much. Um, and so I just think that he's, He's in a really good position. The story all night is going to be playoff drivers having issues and this, you know, and they just don't have that pressure. And it seems like those are the types of guys that those things don't affect because they're just running their own race. And, and I think that that could be a, a fun thing to lean into this weekend. And, and Reddit could be a great GPP play for you. I agree. And I agree that this next guy is going to be uh, a good GPP play. Cause you talk about somebody that's just going to be out there running their race and that's Eric Jones there. He's just going to be out there running his race because legacy now that the races are clicking off for them being Chevy drivers. Now they're about to make their transition to Toyota. So they literally have nothing to lose on the way out the door. And Eric Jones has actually been historically good at this track. So somebody that I don't know if you're digging into the numbers uh, or if you're not digging, if you're just a casual person, you're going to look at his 29 points per race and say, man, I don't think I like it. His $7,400 price tag and go, yeah, but it's Eric Jones. He hasn't necessarily been uh, that good because you only have a memory from before Nashville. The thing is, is that you can pretty much draw a line through Eric Jones season and, and say pre Nashville and post Nashville because, or, or actually Sonoma really is, is post Sonoma uh, is, is where you could draw the line because, you know, up until Sonoma, 
he was finishing in the 30s and the 20s, right? He was having horrible weeks. After Sonoma, 8th place at Nashville, 16th at Chicago, 11th at Atlanta, 11th at Loudoun, 9th at Pocono, 23rd at Richmond, not very good, but it was not a bad DFS day. He did start 27th that day, so basically managed to salvage a decent DFS day. 10th at Michigan. I'm not even counting the road courses because those are road courses, uh, but then 18th at Daytona, still super speedway, but 10th at Darlington, 6th at Kansas. So just a resurgence of that 43 car and, and looking pretty good while doing it. On this track in particular, I said that he's actually been pretty good. Um, last season, he started 24th, finished 21st. Not fantastic, but before that, in the first, his first year in the 43 car, started 22nd, finished 8th. Now he's in the 20 car before that, right? Started 20th, finished 3rd. Started 15th, finished 5th. A uh, couple of bad uh, days in between there in 2019. In, the, in 2019, he had a 22nd finish after a ninth place start, a 4th place finish after a 24th place start. But I will say, and I'll point to this 2017 performance from him as something that I, I would hope to see again at some point. Started on the pole, led 260 laps in the 77 car, and finished 2nd. That is, that is the potential of the driver. That was not the potential of the car, right? Yep. So that that is the potential of Eric Jones to turn any car he's in into a fast car. And I think for $7,400, he's got to be a staple in some of your, your uh, GPP plays this week. Yeah, I love Eric Jones this weekend. We talked about him on the betting episode. Uh, we both had bets on him. He stole the one I wanted, but we both found ways to work him in there. Talladega, the only track he's got a better average finish at since 2020. Like you said, in that 77 car, let a shit ton of laps as a young driver. He is Eric Jones, another driver that's uberly talented. I know things didn't work out at Gibbs for him. We've seen the talent. You see it a tough track. Bristol, not an easy track. It's 500 laps around a short track. This isn't, you know, uh, Charlotte where you get the whole back stretch to kind of breathe for a second and, and stretch your arm. Like this is. You're locked in there making just loops going and going and going. Like it is, it's a lot on these guys. And, and so maybe that's why a lot of our, or really our entire lineup here is, is mostly veteran drivers or guys that have been around a little while, guys that are, have high talent levels. Um, but yeah, Eric Jones this week, I think is a great play and momentum, the momentum he has. They have been running so good as a team, both with host of our in the 42 car has run well these last couple of races. Jones has run great. Jones got, what, a third-place finish last week at Kansas, and that wasn't a, a Joey Logano fluke good finish because he, of the pit strategy. Like, Eric Jones was running up there before that last caution as well. So, uh, yeah, I, I really, really like Eric Jones this week. I was really upset that you stole him from me, but that's okay. I mean, some. But this is why we're symbiotic, right? I, I was listening to a podcast uh, a podcast about how to podcast uh, earlier today. Um <laughs> Because listen, you always have to learn and grow, right? So I, I I do that by listening to other people tell me how to podcast. And they they brought up the fact that there there needs to be more friction. And I was like, nah, I don't know that our listeners want. That's more. what the Xfinity shows for, right? Yeah, that's where one. <laughs> that's where we get our friction out. I know, because me, I'm always like, about this thing although that is our most successful show, so maybe yeah, that is I'll, working. I don't know. <laughs> as far uh, as like hitting bets, anyways. <laughs> maybe I don't know. Maybe there is something. To that. <laughs> I always feel like people go, "Well, mom and dad are fighting, and I feel uncomfortable." But I don't know. I, yeah, it, it's just funny that that happens. Uh, that I say cool. that because because you know me stealing it from you. That's like the only friction that we got is like right. who's stealing uh, whose picks. Yeah, you took the pick that I wanted. That's our friction. <laughs> that, that that is our friction. So, uh, all right. Speaking of Stuart Haas, I'm gonna dip down. Oh, actually, no, never mind. We're, oh, you give out, oh, spoiler alert! Jeez, you give out your lower <laughs> your lower tier. Yeah, see, look at all that friction. Got me all worked up, and I forgot where I was at in the show. Uh, all right, we'll take a step down to our lower tier drivers. Uh oh! If you watch oh, yeah. it on YouTube, you already know who Corey, Cody's is. Corey LaJoy picture has made its appearance on YouTube. Corey LaJoy, fifty five hundred. Uh, again, this is a long race. You want to have a smart guy. You want to talk about some momentum. Uh, it's not been super great, obviously, but it's it's been pretty decent. He's got two consecutive twenty second place finishes, twenty two point five points and twenty two point six points, getting you some points. Daytona, he got you sixty five, but of course that's Daytona. Um, a place like Michigan a couple of weeks ago, he scored you 44 points. Go back to Nashville, he got you 39. 
We're not going to count Chicago, even though that's a nice number because it's Chicago. Uh, places like Coca-Cola 600, another long, grueling race, right? That's important to highlight, not because they're comparable tracks, but because the races are somewhat comparable. 34 points from Corey LaJoy. Starts 25th, finishes 17th for you. Go back over the last couple of years at Bristol, if I can get to the right tab. Last year, started 31st, 15th place finish. LaJoy is the type of driver. He's not going to be flashy. He's not going to lead the laps. He's not going to get the fastest laps. Of course not. But he's going to slowly and methodically just work his way up, get a couple spots here, get a couple spots there, be smart about it, keep it clean, keep it out of trouble. Um, go back a couple of years ago when he was with Go Fast Racing in the 32 car, a much worse car than he's in now by far. Uh, he started 21st that day in, in July of 2020, finished in ninth place. He's got the upside to get you good, strong finishes. 15th last year. Again, yeah, there's a lot of, you know, when he was with TriStar Motorsports, he finished 34th. Even with TriStar and BK, he had a 24th place finish with BK, uh, 24th place finish with GoFast. Uh, the TriStar, he finished in 25th. one. I mean, those are good finishes for the types of cars he was in. And, and obviously, we know these Spire cars keep getting better. I'm sorry, the Spire 7 car keeps getting better. <laughs> uh, but and he's, he's the type of guy who can get you a good, strong performance have a nice solid day for you. Uh, and I think he looks forward to these types of tracks where it's not all out raw speed and he's just lacking it. It's, it is more of the driver hitting their marks 500 straight times. That's where a guy like Corey can stack those pennies that he's always talking about, right? And make the little differences that continue to gain in spots, continue to get good, strong finishes. Maybe he gets you a 15th place finish. Maybe he creeps up and gets a 10th place finish for you. He can have a solid day at only 5,500. Um, Again, you're kind of down in this area. You're looking at, you know, guys like Harrison Burton. Okay, but he's really young. He's a little mistake prone, right? Austin Sindrick, again, it's it's a younger driver. Guys like Todd Gilland around there, it's a really young driver. Cole Custer, he's a little bit more of a veteran, but it's a Rick Ware car, JJ Ye. I mean, that's the types of guys down in this area around Corey LaJoy. So if you are going to go up big and grab a Larson and a Hanlon or a Larson and a Bell right at the top and and try to hit these guys that lead a ton of laps. You're going to need a good, solid guy closer to the bottom. I don't want to stoop down too far. A guy like Corey LaJoy offers you a lot of upside and, and can have a pretty solid week for you. And he's fun to put the picture in front of the camera That's for right. as well. So Look at that uh, beautiful hair. <laughs> I don't know. I, the thing about Corey LaJoy is that we go all out for him all the time. And, you know, the weeks that we, we fawn all over him are the weeks that he doesn't necessarily show up. But I hope, yeah, among he, hopes. He casts a top Chevy like 33 to one for us earlier this season. Hey, Atlanta, and that's, so, we were happy yeah. about that. That's right. We? Yeah. Um, all right. Well, now speaking of SHR, my final driver of the uh, DFS plays will be Ryan priest in that 41 car. Uh, one that I don't think anybody is really going to be on for the most part, uh, other than you, Cody, cause I know you talked about him as well, but oh, you know, big juicy number for a top 10 for him. It, and that's what we're that's what we're kind of banking on. Sixty three hundred is his price in DFS. Uh, and and for Ryan Priest, look, it's not sexy. It's definitely not a sexy play whatsoever. But um, you're going to get a little bit of upside out of him. And at sixty three hundred, like Cody was saying, he was outlining the bottom of the barrel. And, and I'm not stooping that low into the bottom of the barrel because a lot of those guys don't offer the same type of upside as a Ryan Priest uh, on this track. Started twenty seventh in twenty twenty one. Finished 17th. He didn't race in 2022, uh, but he did start 20, 22nd in 2020, finished ninth. Started 33rd in that uh, other race in 2020, finished 12th. Uh, every day that he's been in this truck, or this car rather, ooh, I'm in truck mode last night, uh, it, he's still gotten a pretty decent DFS day out of, uh, out of the car. Go back at what he's done this season. Uh, started out with a pretty decent DFS day in Richmond on a short track. Started 33rd, finished 18th. That's a pretty good uh, point differential day for him there. In Martinsville, fantastic day, right? Put that 41 on the pole. 135 laps that he led. Ultimately, it led to a 15th place finish, but you still got a lot of le uh, lap led points. You still got, and I'm sure that day, he was definitely not necessarily uh, all that high priced. In fact, I'm going back right now to look at where he was. Uh, he was $7,400, got you 59 points. That's a hell of a day for a, a $7,400 price guy. He's not even that high anymore. So you're going to want to uh, to get in there. And again, like I said, it's it's not necessarily that I think 
he's going to win this race. I don't think he's going to get inside of the top three, but he could do a, like he did at Richmond, right? Start 11th and finish fifth. Like that's the kind of, of day you may end up getting out of him uh, on this, on this car. So at 6,300, I, I feel like it's, you know, the upside of a 49 point day is worth putting a little bit of, of money on for that. Yeah. I, I love Ryan Priest. I made the case for him uh, on the, on the betting show earlier this week. Uh, as much as I didn't like to do it, Stuart Haas is going to be good this weekend. This is one of their few chances to shine. They've, they've got the short track thing figured out. They're going to bring fast cars. He's going to be one of those cars. So uh, I love Ryan Priest at, at this price. And again, another fairly cheap guy where you're not having to go too far down into the depths and, and you can still get a pretty good guy in here. So, I mean, we, this, these six guys we gave out again, we don't have, you know, the starting positions and all that right now, but you still got 1500 left to play with. So you got some chances to upgrade at some of these. Uh, and really this, this lineup, I mean, potentially you've got three guys in here that could lead a ton of laps in Larson, Harvick and Reddick. Um, and then you've got three solid lower plays that, that are offer you very high upside. Uh, I think that these are all uh, six really, really good plays we've got this week. I concur. All right. We'll give you some underdog plays that are really, really good too. Uh, but let's introduce you to a show that we love on this network. Hey, everybody. If you play fantasy football, especially in auction leagues. And or you're a whiskey fan. Yes, exactly. Check out the Sports Gambling Podcast fantasy football channel show, Old Fashioned Football. Coming to you every Tuesday morning. Give us a listen. We'll bring you the latest fantasy football data, including. The injury report. Studs and duds. Waiver wire targets. And suggested fab. Market movers. After all, we are the Marks. He is my hubby. And she's J. Mark's wifey. And we're bringing all this to you while drinking an old fashioned and giving you our honest review of a different whiskey every week. All that and more. Hop on over. Give us a listen. Come for the football. Stay for the whiskey. This ad's almost done. Going once. Going twice. Sold. All right. We will reset and start giving out our favorite underdog fantasy plays. If you don't already know or if you haven't already signed up, underdog is offering Man, not just cup, but you get trucks and Xfinity picks. So um, I'm yeah. going to focus on the cup drivers because I don't know when you're going to listen to this. But man, if you if you're not getting in there for the trucks and the Xfinity, you're missing out. Yeah, I'm gonna hopefully you're you're releasing this early in the morning because I've got a couple Xfinity guys that I really like on on here. So I'm gonna go heavier on the Xfinity side of things. But yeah, and they've they've got uh, Xfinity. They get trucks. They got cup. F1 gets in here. It's a little hit and miss on F1 for some reason, but they do get F1 in here too, so it's great. A lot of lot of fun ways to play it, and um, I, I believe you can you can play cross sports here as well. Yes, so you can. if you yeah you want to throw in if you want to take two uh, over the uh, you know over the two seventy one point five they've got them at, you can throw them in here with your your NASCAR plays, and yeah, it's it's great. Yeah, it's amazing. So yeah, please get in there. Uh, I actually, if you if you check out my X profile, uh, you'll see some cup or some truck ones that I liked. Uh, anyways, so I know that it's too late, but uh, you know, for those of you who are following me, you already knew that's that. That's why so. I need to be following Rod. See. Yep, that's what I'm talking about. So, uh, all right, Cody. Well, go ahead and throw out your first driver and whether or not you think they're going to finish higher or lower than their starting position. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to start. Position. I'm going to start Friday night uh, in the Xfinity Series race. Brandon Jones, his, his finishing position is 9.0. I'm going to take the better on this side. Uh, we talked about Brandon Jones. He's got the momentum running pretty good here lately. I know they missed the playoffs a little bit of a letdown, but again, no pressure now, right? They can just go out, run the race. Maybe this is the week he gets a win even, right? Uh, but his last four races here, an average 4.5 finish three times in the top five. He finished second last year. He was second last week at Kansas, has that third place in Michigan, a fifth place at Martinsville. The tracks he's really good at, he has been good at this year, despite having a rougher season for the most part. Um, so yeah, Brandon Jones, and this is better than ninth. I, I think he's going to probably easily be in the top five. Uh, I think he'll definitely be inside the top nine. So Brandon Jones, better than 9.0 crazy because that's i mean the the it seems so low for him to get a top 10 and that's i think that's going to happen for sure you are correct uh you know we both are high go back and listen to the xfinity show you'll know exactly how high we think brandon jones can yeah. finish in this race so another uh, another bet that that rod stole from me <laughs> definitely a good pick uh there uh all right well i will turn my attention to the uh cup race on saturday night 
I'm going to take Christopher Bell. His finishing position is set at 6.5. I say it's lower. I, I say he doesn't finish inside of the top five. I say he doesn't finish inside of the top six. I get it. I know he finished fourth last season, but his average finishing position in the four races that he's been in is 17.5. 29th place finish in 2021. 28th place finish in 2020. Uh, he did finish ninth exactly, uh, or ninth in 2020. So only one finish in his career at Bristol has been inside of the top five, let alone inside the top six. Uh, and, and look, for Christopher Bell, I mean, he did get a fourth place finish at Richmond. Okay, great. He won Bristol dirt, but that's the dirt. Like, I, And I get probably why they set this number the way they did, because they thought, oh, yeah, fantastic. He won at Bristol, but he won on the dirt. So you can't really count that. Uh, 16th place at Martinsville, though. That's a little discouraging. 20th place at Richmond, right? I mean, again, eighth place at Kansas. None of these say sixth place, sixth place or better for Christopher Bell. I get that everybody loves him. I get that everybody wants him, but I, I'm not necessarily all that excited about him finishing inside the top five. And look, even if he starts inside of the top five, I don't think he's going to finish there. So give me Christopher Bell lower than six and a half finishing position. Yeah, I love this. Uh, I mean, he should be good here, right? He's the second highest priced guy uh, for DFS, but the results just haven't been there. It's been rough. He's, he keeps getting really good starts. He catched a pole that for us last week at Kansas, and then he turned around and, and, and cashed a head-to-head -head over here on the other side of because you, you can count on him to start good. You can't count on him to finish good. Um, he, he has won the last two elimination races in the, the NASCAR playoffs, but that was last year, Rod. This is this year. Uh, I agree with you. This was one. So we didn't we we kind of threw this episode together last second. Didn't get a chance to do a document. So we haven't we haven't really been able to see our plays. But you had given me you know which guys you were on, so we couldn't take them. Actually, when you said Bell, I, I wrote down Bell, so I knew not to take him. And then I was looking, and I go, man, maybe I should take the the under on Bell if he's going to go higher. Maybe I'll make it an argument and go lower. So. Glad you went lower because that's the side I would be on as well. So, yeah, good. This is a good call by you. I, I, I would take this side as well. You just, he should be good enough to finish better, but you just can't trust him right now, and you can't trust the team. And uh, yeah, so I think that especially it's not that high of a of a or it's it's too high for where you know it's not. He just needs to finish in the top ten. He's got to finish in the top five. So, makes it a lot harder for him to hit uh, better than. So I do like worse than. Indeed. All right, Cody, your second pick for underdog. Chandler Smith. Going to take him better than 8.5 also in Friday's Xfinity Series race. Hopefully you're listening to this show a little early if you're doing some of these, but I really like these Xfinity ones. Uh, Chandler Smith, another guy we talk talked about. I had planned on betting against Chandler Smith, but I had talked myself into betting on Chandler Smith after I looked at the research, looked at the numbers. This was his best track when he was in the truck series. He's got the best average finish here of all the tracks. Or no, it's second best, rather. I did this in the betting episode, too. I can't read my own notes. Phoenix was the best track. Bristol was second. Sonoma was tossed in there. But then Martinsville, Richmond does much better on the shorter tracks. He's a short track type of guy. Uh, in four truck races, he finished all inside the top nine uh, with a first and a second place finish involved in there. Second place in New Hampshire earlier this season. Won Richmond, one of the more comparable tracks. Fifth at Phoenix been good on the short tracks in general been good at bristol in the past in the trucks doesn't have an xfinity series start yet obviously as a as a first year guy but chandler smith better than 8.5 yeah and that's the only college car you are going to trust this weekend i know that that is yes. a fact you can go back again and listen to the xfinity series uh episode and figure out exactly why uh that's the only one he's going to give you so um, I like that. Uh, give me Joey Logano. I'm going to take his uh, higher or lower. It's set as 11 and a half right now. I, I'm doing this reluctantly because the stats don't back me up as fully as I want them to do. So this is more of a, a I feel this as a higher than 11 and a half. I, I feel like Joey is capable of an 11th place finish. And I say that because the last two races on this track in which he was running, he finished exactly. 11th on this track uh so last season unfortunately he had a suspension issue that took him off the track he ended up on a 27th place finish but he was actually uh, he did start 15th which was a stone's throw away from the 11th position and 
if you look back at uh, what was going on at the end of, uh, he wasn't in the top 10 of either one of those stages, but he was just outside of it. So again, I mean, this is Joey Logano. We're talking about it. It's he's finished 11th in the last two races that he's been on this track, but he's actually had some pretty decent success uh, going back to the short tracks this season. Richmond, he finished seventh. Martinsville, he finished second. Uh, so a couple of good days there as well. Second Richmond was fourth place. Uh, and really, if we're talking about it, three of his last uh, four finishes rather have been inside of the top 10. Now, granted, I know one of them was Watkins Glen, a 10th place. One of them was a fifth place at Daytona. But, you know, a, a fifth place at Kansas last week, he's heading in the right direction. His average finish is 14.7, but his average start is 10.5. He does have uh, 14 top 10s in 28 starts. So exactly half of his races have been top 10 finishes. I'm going to bank on the fact that he can get one done this week uh, on a race where he needs a good finish, right? This 22 team was a champion last year, so they need to go out and show that they're still at least a championship caliber team. So I think a top 10 finish is in the card for Joy Logano. Give me his finishing position higher than 11 and a half. I like it. I, I will stick by the fact that he is the hardest driver in the garage to, to peg where he's going to finish, but I also had a bet on Joey Logano this week. I feel this is, again, it just feels like one of those Joey Logano weeks, right, where he shows up and, and has a really good race, avoids elimination, and, and moves on to the next round of the playoffs. Uh, so I do agree with you. I think that Joey Logano is a good one to take. What did you say? It was 10.5? 11.5 11.5 11. yeah so he just yeah you're getting a top 10 yeah top 11 finish that's uh that's a really good one i, I do like that one a lot uh all right last one for you cody last one for me martin truex jr can you believe this rod 11.0 is his finishing position you look at that and you think to yourself wow why is martin truex jr so low you've got it you've got to take better than 11th right mm -hmm. wrong you don't yeah. have to take better than 11th martin truex jr uh it's been a rough start to the playoffs for Truex, right? Wins the regular season title. Now, coming into the third race, the first cutoff race, he's seven points below the cut line. He could be the first ever regular season champion eliminated in the round of 16. And Rod, since 2020, out of 28 tracks, uh, where do you think Bristol ranks for Martin Truex Jr. Uh, on that list of, of 28 tracks? 28th? 26th so ah, pretty close. damn close this is not a good track for him uh granted last year didn't help where he had issues early on in the race and, and retired very early but his average finish over those four races 21.8 33 career starts at bristol two career top five finishes those were back to back in 2011 and 2012 bristol has just not been kind to martin Truex jr there's nothing that makes me think that's going to change this weekend he doesn't have the momentum. He, he had the momentum for a while, right? And he was just killing it. And, and he's looked good on some of the other short tracks this year, but I don't think it's going to translate here. He's uh, they're behind it now. Right. And they've got all the pressure and they're going to be scrambling and, and they're, they're going to be more prone to make that little mistake because they're trying so hard not to get eliminated, not to be the first regular season champion to get knocked out. I don't think he finishes better than 11th. Um, and I think that they have it priced at 11th. Because you think to yourself, he, he's got to finish better than 11th, right? And the numbers say he's probably not going to. So give me Martin Truex Jr. to finish worse than 11th place. That's a tough one because we were riding high on Truex for the longest time. And this is the point in the season. And this is why we always tell you, too, especially in the betting episodes, you got to know when to let go of these guys. And when they're on their decline, rather than hit them at their height and then just kind of hold on and, and hold on too long, you got to know when to pull off of them. So. Yeah, definitely unfortunate for Truex, but got to do what you got to do, right? Uh, however, this is where we don't necessarily have to pull off on Kyle Busch. Uh, his finishing position is set at nine and a half. I'm going to go higher than nine and a half. And, and this is one where it's tough because obviously Kyle Busch in a new car, he's in the eighth this year. So you can kind of take some of what he did in the past uh, as far as what he can do as a driver. Because, look, Kyle Busch on this track, his name is cemented on this. I told you earlier about how he has led the most laps around this track at all uh, at 2,500, right? 2,593 laps that he's led around this track. He has eight wins on this track, 14 top fives, 19 top tens, and 33 career starts. 
just a maniac when it comes to this race, uh, comes to this track. But unfortunately, the last couple of seasons have not been good for Kyle Busch on this track. Started ninth in 2021, finished 21st. Started 21st on this track. Uh, last season had engine problems, 34th, right? That was, especially last season, we was kind of a lame duck at that point. And we knew that that 18 car did not have a lot of steam left in it. And uh, and neither did the driver for that matter. So we kind of throw that one out as well. But, the, you know, 21st in, in, uh, in 2021 is a little concerning. However... Kyle Busch this season, 15 top 10s in 28 starts, right? Not bad. Uh, two of his last three races have been seventh place finishes. Exactly. He had a third at Richmond uh, a few a few weeks back. So that is pretty, uh, that's, con- um, what do you call it? When it's encouraging. That's that's what it's called. Can you tell it's been a long week? Uh, so again, I mean, some good finishes there. Unfortunately, you kind of look at Martinsville, a 21st place finish, Bristol Dirt, a 32nd place finish, and Richmond is a 14th place finish, and kind of cringe a little bit and think to yourself, "Ah, I don't know if I want to do it, but I think Kyle Busch's head might be better in the game. Obviously, you just heard that the the pit pit crews are going to be changed, which maybe gives him a little leg up, maybe pushes him into that ninth place finish or better, but he's had the car to run fast. Getting the finishes have been the issue for Kyle Busch, not getting in his way, not tripping over a, a hose or whatever. But um, I think he can get a nice solid ninth place or better finish. So give me Kyle Busch higher than nine and a half. Do you know how many wins Kyle Busch has on this track between the cup Xfinity and truck series, Rod? Well, it is like 16, 20, 22, 22 wins between the top three series of NASCAR on this track. He freaking loves this place. Don't forget, early on in the season, he was had moved to the championship favorite at one point on the betting odds because the season was going so well. It's been a little up and down since, but he's got the capability of doing this. Um, and, and you know, he knows he just needs to get a, a decent finish. I don't think he's he's not. Uh, I don't think he's under the playoff cut line. So he just needs to come out, run a good race, and, and get a good solid finish to move on to the next round. Um, so he is, yeah, he's twenty four points to the good. So. He's in a really good position. Come out, run a good race, run a smooth, clean race, uh, and on his best track. I mean, 22 wins. Uh, a lot of guys don't get to 22 wins in in NASCAR or any of the series in general, and he's got 22 across the top three series. Eight in the Cup Series. That A lot of people don't get to eight in their Cup Series career, and he's got eight at one track. It's crazy. He's really good here. So, yeah, hard to argue, hard to argue against that. Indeed. Uh, all right. Well. That is it, folks. We've given you our three DFS plays each and our three underdog picks each. These shows just get packed. That's really the great part about this show. It's a it's gotten way more packed now that we've added underdog, and I love it. That's right. Yeah, no, it's great. And and again, it's so much fun. And and again, the DFS part's fun. Obviously, we love doing the DFS. We got our five dollar contest every week in the Discord. Come get in there. But for the underdog picks, you're not going up against anybody else. Just yourself. You you just have to pick higher or lower. Get a couple of them right. It's it's a, a fun, different way to play. That's uh that's a lot of fun. And then again, you're just relying on yourself, not what other people did as well. So it's great. Beautiful stuff. Uh, all right, Cody. Well, let us release everybody now for the weekend to enjoy the rest of this weekend of racing. Hopefully, you enjoyed the truck race. Hopefully, we enjoyed the truck race. Uh, and we'll definitely be back to break it all down for you on our recap show, either Sunday night or Monday morning, depending on when we get that out. So. Uh, until then, Cody, remind everyone where they can find you on social media. Yep. You can follow me on X at Husker underscore Z. Got all my work over there. It's a lot of stuff, a bunch of fantasy football stuff, a bunch of racing stuff. Check it all out. Check out the F1 gambling podcast. Let's go racing. Let's make some money this weekend. Indeed folks. Yes. Follow me on X at RJ via Gomez link in the bottom. Everything I got going on, whether it's here, check out in between media. We've got uh, me and Seth hanging out, talking about Bristol baby, uh, on their YouTube channel as well. Get in on the Discord. Listen, I, I like I said, I was listening to a podcast uh, about podcasting the uh, this while my drive today and talking about building a community. And I got to tell you, everything they were saying, I was like, yeah, we do that. Yeah, that Discord is exactly that. So uh, kudos to everybody in the Discord for being the type of community that every other podcaster wishes they had. And uh, the rest of you guys that are out there that want to get a part of that and join the family, please do the more the merrier, the more the conversation going on, 
the better time it is. So we'll be back again next week to recap all the races. Until then, enjoy all of it. Let's go racing and let it ride. I'll cast away all the miles.